Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to the 43rd Ryder Cup here at Whistling Straits. We are here with United States Ryder Cup Captain Steve Stricker. Captain, thank you for finding us again. Um, one complete day of practice in. Um, what are you seeing out on that golf course? A little cooler temperatures, but uh, you know, is it just nice to get your team kind of in a groove um, as you start to work your way collectively as a team toward Friday and through the weekend? Yeah, very much so. Uh, and we took advantage of this day of, you know, the weather forecast looks for some heavier winds the next two days. So we felt like it was an important time to get out there and play 18 holes, get these guys uh, some holes under their belt and get them out here. They're excited to be out here. They're enthused. They're ready to go. And um, so it was a great day. The weather turned out great at the end and we had a great time out there. Terrific. Let's hit the floor for some questions. I guess we'll start over with number five. five. I believe. Hey, Steve, uh, this is just a nuts and bolts question, but can you go Monday through Thursday and just let us know what the obligations are at night for the team, whether it's events they have to go to, dinners, things that are a, a must? Yeah, I mean, we have, we have a dinner with each other every night. I mean, we were in our hotel room or our uh, team room at the hotel, just the team. Um, Tonight we have a dinner with just the team um, locally here, not too far away. Uh, very casual, uh, kind of, I don't enjoy getting dressed up and getting all, uh, or Nikki for that matter, you know, she, <laughs> she's uh, very casual and, and I'm very casual. So we're trying to bring this attitude of, of uh, relaxed and, and uh, having a good time and being very casual. Uh, we're hopefully, hopefully rubbing off on the team that, we're just here to have a fun, good time, and, and, uh, but dinners every night, being together with each other, just uh, building those relationships. Um, guys are enjoying themselves with each other. It's, it's been great in the team room. Um, and like I said, it's, it, it's kind of translated out onto the golf course, to tell you the truth. They, they had a ball today, it looked like. They were you know, goofing around and having fun with one another, and, uh, and that's no different when we get back to the team room. Although, um, have you made it a uh, priority to reduce those sort of obligations that are outside the team? Has COVID been, cut those out? How has that worked? A little bit of both. Yeah. Um, my goal coming in there was to kind of cut some of that out, and then COVID's kind of helped us do that, you know, and, and we're, we're doing the sensible things. We're doing the proper things to stay safe and within our team zone and within that bubble and just trying to make sure that no one gets sick. I mean, we want to play. We don't want anything to uh, to jeopardize the health of any of our players or captains. And uh, so we're we're cognizant of that. We're paying attention to that, and and we're trying to do the right things. Thank you. All right, let's go over here on your left, Captain Twenty One, Jeff. Steve, this can be a really demanding golf course when you have to post a score. I'm curious in a match play format. Do you see it in your players like a different mindset, a different aggressiveness on? how you can attack in spots here? You know, I think they're developing the game plan, you know, last week when we were here, and then obviously today they're going around. Um, you know, it's situational for each player. They, each guy's a little bit different. Um, you know, some guys like to attack. Some guys are pretty strategic and, and lay back, uh, kind of whatever they feel comfortable. You know, for one guy, uh, he may be comfortable with one thing and that other guy may be uncomfortable with the same shot, you know, so to each his own kind of thing. And um, yeah, so they're developing that as they're going around. And, um, you know, I guess it's situational, too. I mean, the guys will see how they're playing, see how they're feeling. Each shot is a little bit different. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's fun to watch them. I know that when I was going around there today, it's to hear that sound. You don't hear that sound on the Champions Tour the sound of them hitting the ball like they do. And it's, it's pretty impressive, these guys, how far they hit it and how solid they hit it. And uh, they're really good. Let's go over to number six. Rex, please. I mean, no specifics, obviously. But how set in your game plan as far as pairings were you coming into this week? And what are the chances that that might change over the next two days of practice? I was pretty set, you know, uh, in my mind. Always some questions whether it's the right thing or not. I, I've done a lot of homework. Um, talk to my assistant captains a bunch, talk to the players a bunch. Um, you know, everything looks really good on paper at times, but then you're like, oh, you know, what if something happens kind of thing. You always got to be prepared for the what ifs. Uh, so that's what we're doing as well. 
Um, but yeah, we've had a pretty good game plan from a while back. And, um, you know, we're, we're putting that into play. We're putting that in place. All right, let's go to Gary, number three. Steve, uh, what was your first tee experience like at Valhalla? And uh, what's the best first tee story you've heard from the guys uh, who have experienced that? Um, yeah, it's, a, uh, it's an unbelievable experience, and it'll be no different here. I mean, just coming out onto the first tee today was, was a cool experience. Uh, and it'll be 10 times more electric come Friday. Um, yeah, it's just uh, they're, all, they're all a little bit different. I mean, Paris was unbelievable. That was like walking into a stadium. I mean, there were so many people around the first and 18 green there. Um, but it's just, uh, it's an, and it's a nerve-wracking one. I remember being very nervous, but really excited and amped up to get out there to play. Um, so you got to, you know, my suggestion to the guys and uh, what I've been telling them is that, you know, to, to go experience it if you're not, you know, if you're not playing that first morning is if you want to go experience that. Um, you know, it's, it's just a really cool atmosphere and nerve-wracking, but one that you wait your entire life, uh, golfing life, that is, to, to experience. Captain, we're going to beam out to Art Strickland. <coughs> Art, go ahead, sir. You're with the captain. Yeah, Strick, uh, I know that you want to get your rookies off to a good start. Have you given some thought to playing Scotty Scheffler with a guy he might know well, like a Bryson or a, or a Jordan Spieth, uh, to get him going early since he hasn't been in this kind of atmosphere before? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I guess you're going to have to tune in on Friday to watch. Uh, I'm really not going to. Uh, going to pairings quite yet with anybody. You know, Friday at the opening ceremony would be a great time to, uh, to let you know. Okay, let's come back in the room here. <laughs> number seven over here. Uh, two, if you can. Uh, on, um, on Colin and Brooks, you know, when it comes to kind of evaluating them coming back from those injuries, how much do you weigh what they say, how they're feeling, and versus what you see right? and you how you Who kind of evaluate? Who was the first one you said? Uh, more comes back. Oh yeah, and, uh, and and Brooks. Yeah, how much do I weigh? What? How much do you weigh? Like what they tell you in terms of how they're feeling. If they say, oh, you know, I'm 100 percent versus you evaluating them and what you see. Oh yeah, no, I've I've talked to them both and and um, they've assured me that they're 100 percent and ready to go and they'll do whatever it takes to to play as many matches that we ask of them. So um, that's a no issues from either one of those guys. And you mentioned about trying to keep things light, especially at night, and maybe more casual, more relaxed, um, less pressure. Uh, is that something that you've maybe thought of in the past that maybe guys were a little wound too tight or maybe putting too much pressure on themselves? Well, you know, we're here. You know, some guys got in Sunday. Some guys got in Monday. I mean, we all want to play right now. I mean, it's it's about trying to temper that excitement and and energy and we still have three more days right of of uh getting ready and um so it's about you know give them giving them their space too you know i mean they all prepare a little bit differently i prepare differently than anybody else on that team and they you know everybody again to each of their own right they they have a way they're in a routine on a weekly basis they uh they're used to doing it one way so i i want to give them that opportunity to do it whatever which way uh, they need to do it, hopefully, to bring out their best golf. Michael, number eight. Thank you, John. Uh, Steve, when you when you talk to uh, P Patrick, uh, it's a torrent of words that you get from him. You've known him. You get a lot of words from Patrick when you ask him something. You've known him a long time. I'm wondering if you can remember anything really memorable he's ever said to you. Um, I don't know if it's a specific time, but I've. Uh, had the pleasure of playing with him a number of times over the course of my career. Uh, I had a chipping contest. I remember him one year at Congressional. You know, just uh, just a wonderful man. He's he's a friend. Uh, got to know him somewhat through the course of my career, but just uh, a true um, gentleman, a true champion. Uh, you know, a guy that I think has got an unbelievable mo amount of <clears throat> of uh, talent. You know, and He's changed his swing and does some different things to improve his game. He's not afraid to do that. 
so just a really uh, wonderful guy and, and uh, neat guy to know. If I could just follow up on that, you know, the world's in a very topsy-turvy place right now. Did you think it was important for you two guys to come in here as the captains and do it with a lot of a certain level of, of grace and gentlemanliness? Um, I don't think we're, you know, doing it any different than than who we really are. You know, I mean, um, yeah, I think you're just seeing us. I mean, we're, you know, we're polite to one another. We're we're um, try to conduct ourselves in the the proper manner and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I mean, we're excited to be playing here in front of fans. I mean, let's be real. I mean, if we would have had this last year with no fans, I mean, it would have been a shame. Um, but we're, we have this opportunity, an unbelievable opportunity to to play this in front of, you know, the fans of Wisconsin and around the world and around our country. So yeah, it, it's going to provide a lot of relief and and get people away from thinking about COVID for a while and think about watching some great golf. Thank you, Steve. Front right, uh, number one. Steve, um, with all the talk about fan behavior this year, <clears throat> what are your concerns out there? And also, what do you think that the vibe is going to be specific to Wisconsin? And secondly, what defines people from Wisconsin? What do you, what do you think that and how would you like to see that defined in this Ryder Cup? Yeah, and, and we can go on past history here with the other PGA championships here, the U.S. Open at Aaron Hills down the road. You know, the, the sports fans of Wisconsin turn out in droves. They're very, uh, they'll be loud. They'll be pro-U.S., right, which we're hoping for. But we're also hoping they don't cross the line, you know, which we've seen at some other Ryder Cups throughout the years. But, yeah, I, ex I expect... Uh, you know, good rowdy fans. It's going to be rowdy. It's going to be loud, especially the first tee uh, and pro USA, obviously. Um, so we're looking forward to that. We need that. We need that backing. You know, it, it is our home turf. So uh, what defines what was the, defines Wisconsin, Wisconsin yeah, fans? Right. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of blue collar, hardworking people, you know, uh, salt of the earth people. Um, you know, I Midwest people are, you know, always seem to be uh, very nice and courteous, and yeah, I, I, um, I'm partial to that. I don't mean anything negative against any other part of the country, but you know, it's just great Midwestern folks. So you would think that this would feel differently a little bit from some other Ryder Cups. Well, we were up in Hazeltine not too long ago, and that that's you know that got loud and um, somewhat crossed the line at times, which we don't want to see. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's going to, you know, it's a Ryder Cup. These fans have been pent up for a long time and they're going to come out and, and get behind their team. So it's, it's going to be loud and we expect it to be loud. But again, we ask for people not to cross that line, you know, and, and be respectful of both sides. Time for a couple more. Straight across number four. Uh, Steve, a family question. I understand you're getting texts out there from your oldest daughter who was watching your youngest daughter win her first significant high school championship. Yeah. What does it mean to you that Izzy was able to do something so special for her in a week that's uh, so special for all of you as a family? Yeah, very cool. You know, we're, you know, it's a golf, a golf family. We're excited. We're, we root each other on. We're, we're, you know, a part of each other's lives when it comes to golf. So pretty cool. Let's wrap it up here with Jeff right behind me, 20. Uh, Steve, you mentioned the, the wind. Uh, I'm over here. Sorry. The wind the next few days. Uh, you've been mon monitoring that. Um, is this golf course, is this a local knowledge um, golf course? And if so, um, what are you doing to feed information to players either regarding wind directions and things like that or just general uh, little bits and pieces of local knowledge? Um, you know, I think it's just, I can't re really provide them too much of anything. You know, I think it's just experiencing that for themselves. You know, we were able to come here, like I said, last week, and we saw different wind conditions, different directions than we saw today. So we've been, we've seen, you know, three different days of wind direction. So I think sometimes all you can do is get out there and experience it and, and see those different conditions for yourself, for yourself and, develop your game plan and be prepared uh, in case that wind switches around, which it's supposed to. We have we know where it's supposed to come out of during the tournament, and um, it's not going to be that way the next couple of days. So, 
Um, you know, these guys are probably doing a lot of homework at night with themselves, you know, thinking about the course and that different wind direction. And uh, they talk with their partners, potential partners on game plans. And so it's, uh, it'll be a challenge, you know, for guys that have not seen a particular win that all of a sudden it's going to switch around. So, but they'll, they'll do their homework. They're smart. They, they do this for a living and they'll be, they'll be ready and prepared. Captain, thanks again for your time. Congratulations right. on the daughter's achievement. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, have Appreciate a good night. It. You guys too. Thank you.